Hi, my name is Warren and I am the product genius here at South Shore Mini. I would like to congratulate you once again on your new mini hardtop. In this video, I'd like to provide a welcome introduction and tutorial of your new mini. We'll work from left to right and I will touch on all of your hardtop's functions and features and hope to better acclimate you to your new mini. Starting over on your left here on the driver's door, we will find starting at the top, the joystick to adjust our side view mirrors. Just below that, we will have a selector to select left or right and make the adjustments with the joystick for the side view mirrors. Right next to that, you'll find another button with a little picture of the side view mirror. If your car is equipped, that button will power fold in the side view mirrors for you, which is great for parking in a tight spot or on the street. Pressing it again will fold them back out for you. Moving down, you have the window controls for the front windows and the rear windows. If you are in a four-door hardtop. Otherwise, you'll just have the front windows for a two-door hardtop. All of the window controls are going to be fully automatic, uh, one touch up and down. At the very bottom, if you are in a four-door hardtop, there will be a button. This button will enable you to lock out the rear window controls, which is great if you have kids or pets in the back and you don't want them to inadvertently uh, lower or raise a window. On the driver's door, you'll also find integrated into the door release, the door locks, unlock and lock. Next, moving down to the left, you will find the headlight control switch. It is currently in the automatic position indicated by the A. This will automatically manage your headlights day and night. It will even turn them on when the wipers are running in the rain. Straight up to the zero is going to be off. The next position over to the right is going to be your parking lamps. And then all the way to the right is going to be headlights on all of the time. The little round button here on our left is going to be our bad weather lights and they serve the same function as the fog lights used to. It's good for providing some extra light and visibility down low on the road or during bad visibility conditions. On the right side here you'll find a little wheel that you can roll up and down and this will adjust the intensity of your instrument cluster at nighttime if you find it to be a little too bright or too dark. Lastly, just behind the steering column release, you will find the heated steering wheel button if your car is equipped with that. Moving over to directly in front of you, at the very top, if your car is equipped, you will find the head-up display. The head-up display is gonna provide you with the most important driving information directly in your line of sight as you look out the windshield at the road ahead of you. If you're looking for more information regarding the head-up display, I do have a deep dive video on our channel that looks at the head-up display, how it works, how to configure it. So check that video out. Moving down directly in front of the steering wheel is going to be your digital instrument cluster. This is going to provide you all of your basic information that any analog instrument cluster would have in previous minis, but it's going to do so in a more streamlined and modern way. You'll see your tachometer on the left. You'll see time, temperature, estimated range until empty. You'll see in the little white box the speed limit of the road you're on. Your speed is dead center, displayed digitally. All the way on the right, you will find your fuel gauge, symbolized by the segmented ring. 
Moving to the steering wheel, you're going to find cruise control on the left side of the steering wheel. The right side is going to be all entertainment controls. You'll have volume controls at your fingertips. You'll also have an up and down arrow, which will allow you to change radio stations or switch between tracks if you're listening to music off of your phone. The phone button will allow you to answer or hang up a phone call. And the button symbolized with the person speaking is going to bring up either the mini voice assistant or if your phone is paired and equipped, it will bring up your phone's voice assistant as well. A quick press it brings up the Mini's voice assistant. And a long press will bring up your phone's voice assistant, like Siri, for example. Tucked just behind on the steering wheel, on the left and the right, are going to be your paddle shifters, if your car is equipped with them. They will allow you to shift the transmission manually, minus to downshift and plus to upshift. Moving just behind there, on the left side, you're going to have your turn signal. On the very end of the turn signal, there are two buttons. The top one labeled BC is gonna be for the board computer. Pressing this button will allow you to toggle through various driving information. In the bottom of your digital instrument cluster, the button on the bottom at the end of the turn signal symbolized with a picture of headlights and A is going to enable your automatic high beams. Enabling automatic high beams at night will turn on the high beams and will automatically dim them if an oncoming car is detected. Once the car is passed, your high beams will turn back on. Moving to the right side, you're going to have all of your wiper controls. On the stick, you'll find that everything is labeled as to what it does in case you forget. The stick is currently in the off position. A single press down will give us a single wipe of the front windshield. The first position up is actually going to be the automatic mode. The wipers will be rain sensing in this mode and they will automatically start and stop as the rain start and stops. You can adjust the sensitivity of the automatic mode with this inner dial from slow to fast depending on your preference. When the automatic mode is engaged you will see a little green light here indicating that the system is active. Pushing the stick up further brings you to a constant speed wiping and pushing it up even further brings you to a higher speed constant wipe. At the very end, you will find the rear wiper control. Simply twist it to turn it on and twist it further to the graphic of the rear window with the spray to wash the rear window. Washing the front window, simply pull the stick towards you. Moving over to the center part of your Mini, working from top to bottom, we're going to find the hazards or flashers button. Right next to that is going to be a button with a green ring surrounding a car. That button symbolizes that your intelligent safety systems are all activated. Pressing on that button will allow you to deactivate specific systems by checking or unchecking boxes on the list here of available systems. Press it once more, turns green, everything is activated once again. Of course, we do have our touchscreen central display this is where you're gonna find all of your various infotainment categories. From media and radio, 
to communication for your telephone. You'll find navigation if your car is equipped with the mini navigation system. You'll find my mini where you're going to be able to make any adjustments to the settings of your mini. Mini connected, which will enable you to get assistance in a variety of ways from roadside assistance to customer support to concierge services and a notifications menu for anything that your car wants to alert you about. Just below the central display, you'll find a couple hard keys related to music and radio. Band and mode will allow you to switch between FM, AM, satellite radio, as well as any external media sources like your phone. You'll find a large volume knob here in the center, as well as on and off for radio. You'll also find dedicated backwards and forwards arrows allowing you to jump between radio stations. At the very bottom, you'll find one through six. These are hotkeys that can be programmed to anything inside of the mini operating system. To program a hotkey, you simply need to highlight the item you'd like to store. So I'll demonstrate that with a radio station. I've highlighted 105.7, press and hold. You can hear the chime and I now have WROR stored to button one. These buttons are really great because they can not only be radio stations, they could be phone numbers for anyone you frequently talk to. They could be addresses to quickly navigate using the navigation system, or they could be any menus in here that you frequently navigate to. Moving down just below the central display, you'll find your climate control. In this case, we've got dual zone automatic climate control. You can adjust the temperature independently for driver and passenger side. Central knob is going to control your fan speed. Automatic is going to automatically select which vents are best for the temperature that you've set. If you'd like to control the vents manually, pressing on the person here at the bottom will allow you to toggle through a variety of configurations of vents. The row of buttons below are all climate related functions. Starting on the left, you have driver's heated seat, front defrost, rear defrost, recirculated cabin air, air conditioning, max air conditioning, and the passenger heated seat. Moving down below to the toggle switches. Here on the left, we have A off. This switch will enable or disable the fuel saving start stop system, which turns off the engine when at a complete stop, like at a red light. The little trick I like to use is when the light is on, the engine will stay on. When the light is off, the engine can turn off. Dead center, you have your start stop button for the engine. To the right, you have the ability to disable the traction control. And all the way to the right, we have a driving mode selector. Pressing up will bring us into sport mode. Pressing down brings us back to mid, which is where we were by default. And all the way down will bring us into green mode. Below the toggle switches, you'll find power ports, a couple USB ports, as well as a 12 volt power port. Just behind there, in the center, you'll find your gear selector. If your vehicle is equipped with the automatic transmission, this is what your gear selector will look like. In order to shift, just make sure you're pressing the unlock button on the left side as you move the shifter backwards and forwards. 
In order to park, simply press the P button at the top. Moving just behind the shifter, you're going to find your controller for the central display. You'll also find your e-brake or parking brake. The center armrest does open. If your car has the wireless charger, you'll find that charging pad inside the armrest. Otherwise, you'll have storage space in here. Moving all the way up above your rear view mirror in the center console here, you're going to find four switches, two and two. These are all lighting controls. Starting on the left, you've got the driver's reading light. You then have all of the interior lights. You have the open and close for the sunroof. You've got the ambient lighting control. So each time you press this switch, the ambient lighting in the car will change to a different color. And then you have the passenger's reading light. Above that, you have the SOS button. In order to use this, you'll press and open the protective cover. You'll find the orange SOS button underneath. Pressing this button will dial mini assist so you can get roadside assistance. On the right is simply a indicator light that will light up as it is now when the passenger airbag is deactivated if no one is sitting in the seat. I hope this has been a helpful overview of your new mini hardtop. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel for additional tutorial videos and videos that dive deeper into specific features of your new mini. As always, please feel free to reach out to me with any specific questions that you might have Again, my name is Warren, and I am the product genius here at South Shore Mini. Take care.